Hello and welcome to another lecture on probability. Today we shall be discussing about binomial trials and binomial distribution and we are going to discuss some numerical problems that would be based on these binomial distributions and trials. Now beginning with binomial trials which are also known as Bernoullian trials. If an experiment can result in only two outcomes then we say it to be binomial or Bernoullian. In binomial trial, if the probability of success is P and of failure is Q, then P plus Q is equal to 1. If n trials of this experiment are made and they are independent of each other, then in each trial the probability of success is P. Now if the trial is repeated n times, then the probability of all trials succeeding is P to power n and if all trials are failing then probability is equal to q to power n which is equal to 1 minus p with whole power n. The probability of at least one success is equal to 1 minus qn which is obtained by substituting the value of q which is 1 minus q and we get 1 minus qn equal to 1 minus bracket 1 minus p bracket close to power n. The probability of r successes where r lies between 0 and n is given as n c r p to power r and q with power of n minus r. The probability of at least r successes is given as summation of n equal to r to k n c k p to power k q to power n minus k. Using these values we can find the probability for n number of trials where p denotes the probability of success and q denotes the probability of failures. Next we are going to discuss about binomial distribution. For this we suppose a coin which is being tossed twice and x denotes the number of heads obtained in those two tosses then sample space is equal to the combination of two tails or a combination of first head and then tail or a combination of first tail and then head or a combination of both the heads. Thus x can get the values 0, 1, 1 or 2 according to this sample space. Now we consider the result ht. The probability of this result is p into q which is obtained by multiplying the probability of heads and the probability of tails. In a similar manner we can calculate the probabilities of other results and prepare the table as shown. Now here if we have two heads then the number of heads that is x is 2 and the probability is given as p square or p dot p where p denotes the number of successes which is equal to getting of probability of getting heads. Then in the second case we have the outcome as ht that is first head and then tail that means the value of x is 1 here and the probability of success is equal to p into q where p denotes the probability of getting a head and q denotes the probability of getting a tail. Now in the third case when we have first tail and then head then the number of heads is 1 and we have the probability as q dot p where q denotes the probability of getting a tail and p denotes the probability of getting a head. On the similar lines when we have two tails then the number of heads is obtained is 0 and thus the probability is q dot q where q denotes the probability of getting a tail. Thus for P be the probability of success of an event and Q be the probability of failure of the event in one trial. Suppose there are n trials of the event in a binomial experiment. Then the binomial probability distribution is defined by the table where X denotes the variable and Px denotes its probability. When X is 0 then Px is given as Q to power n and when x 
is equal to 1, then PS gets the value of NC1 P Q to power N minus 1. Similarly, for X equal to 2, PX gets the value NC2 P square Q N minus 2. And for N value of X, we have PX as P to power N. In general, PR is equal to NCR P to power R Q to power N minus R and the sum of these probabilities is always equal to 1 since the sum of number of failures and the number of successes is always equal to 1. Next we are going to evaluate the conditions for applying the binomial distribution. The first condition is that the number of trials are finite and fixed. The second is that in every trial there are only two possible outcomes success or failure. The third one is that the trials are independent that is the outcome of one trial does not affect the other trial. Another condition is that the probability of success or failure is constant in each trial. Next we are going to discuss a numerical problem. We have a problem in which if a die is rolled 5 times, we have to find the probability first of having aces in 2 of the rolls, the second of having at most 2 aces and the third one of having at least 2 aces. Now in this given problem, success is in having a 1. Hence, P is equal to which gives us the probability of success is equal to 1 by 6 and Q which is equal to 1 minus P is equal to 5 by 6. Now here N is equal to 5 and in the first problem we have R equal to 2. Now the probability of having 2 aces that is X equal to 2 then we have the probability which is given as 5 C2 P2 Q N minus R which is 3. This gives us 5 into 4 divided by 2 into 1 into P square which is 1 by 6 square into Q cube which is 5 by 6 cube. This gives us a value of 0.16. Now this 0.16 is the value for probability of getting aces in two of the rolls. Now in the second part of the question, it is necessary to compute probabilities of obtaining precisely 0 ones and 1 1 and 2 ones. Thus we use the expansion Q plus P to power N which is equal to 5 by 6 plus 1 by 6 whole to power N and the probability of obtaining 0 ones is equal to Q N which is equal to 5 by 6 to power 5 which is equal to 0 0.40 similarly in order to obtain 1's a 1 we have the probability given as nc1 q n minus 1 into p which is equal to 5 c1 into 5 by 6 to power 4 into 1 by 6 which gives us a value of 0 0.40 thus the probability of getting at most two ones is equal to 0.40 the probability of getting zero ones plus probability of getting one one and probability of getting twice once which was obtained and we have the values as 
zero point four zero plus zero point four zero plus point one six which is equal to point nine six. Now in the third part of this question we have to find the probability of having at least two aces. This is found out by using the formula five C two P square Q power three plus five C three P to power three Q square plus five C four P to power four Q to power one plus P to power five. Now substituting these values we have five C two into P square where P is having the value of one by six into Q cube where Q is having the value of five by six cube plus five C three into one by six cube into five by six square plus five C four into one by six cube four to power four into Q which is five by six plus P to power five where P is having the value of one by six this gives us a value of zero point two zero. Thus the probability of having at least two aces is point two zero. With this we conclude this lecture on probability which was based on binomial trials and binomial distributions.